Hello and welcome to a special work in progress episode on Cactus Dry Dock. And in the Dry Dock today, we'll be working on my crotch and butt plates. Let's make it real. Now, if you've been watching the work in progresses so far, thank you so much. And if you do like these episodes, please click down the subscribe button below. And if you've already done so, then I salute you. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. So before I proceed, one thing I wanna let you know, if you just click onto the card there, I have made a new video which is dedicated on how I paint the Stormtrooper armor. And that applies to yeah, anything else when it comes to piece. using automotive spray cans. The reason I've done that is because I've noticed that every single episode I'm doing, on this work in progress I'm just retreading old ground and for those who have been following those episodes you're probably rolling your eyes or you're scrubbing across on the YouTube channel because you know it you've seen the procedure so if you do want to actually see how I paint the Stormtrooper armor or in fact anything on this scale and you're getting a really good finish using automotive paints click on the video card showing now. Ah, so you're probably wondering, it looks a bit clean already. Yes, because I trimmed all the flashing off before I filmed this, because again, you've probably seen many videos like this when I've actually trimmed every single piece. There's nothing really special about this. It's really clear where to trim. And uh, yeah, you know how it goes. Check out my butt. So now I have to work out how to attach it to the abdomen part of the armor. It's a nice big piece. And so what I need to do is give a little bit of clearance for the belt. So the belt pretty much sits into this recess here. So I've got to make sure that it sits like so. So it just hangs it off the armor. So it's not too flush, it doesn't go all the way up there. It goes like there. And if you remember looking at the belt, the back part of the belt, has a snap to help secure onto the armor. So I'll make sure that this corresponds with a snap right here. So th this one is a female snap. And so I'll add a male part of the snap going outwards and so it will snap right there. There'll be another two snaps which will attach to webbing just like I did with the cod piece. So there's gonna be one there and one there. But the one here, I need to work out exactly where that snap is on uh, when it regard <laughs> where that snap is regarding the height, so it attaches to the belt first time. Always a scary part: using a drill on your lovely painted armor. Now this is where I start making holes where the sharpie marks are for my snaps. Uh, the drill bit is the exact same, roughly the same sort of radius for the snap, and all I need to do is, yeah make holes in my beautiful armor. Now to install the snaps. Now I've done this in the previous episode, but I'm gonna go through it again and show you how I hammer it all together. So this is the kit and this is the plate that I need. So I'll pop that onto a nice firm hard surface like a desk. And I'm gonna be using the male part of the snap. So that's these two bits here. So there we go. So there's the back and there's the front, so that's quite recognizable. Now, I've already done one already on my butt plate. There we go, that's it installed, and you can see how it's mushroomed out, and that's a nice firm fixture right there. And I've already made holes where I use my Sharpie. So what I'll do there, because I want my this snap to be facing inwards, and I'll show you a good reason why. So if I just pop that in there, there we go. That is nice and flush. And that's one of the reasons why I want it that way. Uh, this one, because it's snapping into the belt, that's why it's okay that it's sticking out because it's gonna go directly into the female part of the snap. Whereas this one, that is gonna go on the inside and snap into the webbing on the female side. You understand? <laughs> I know it sounds a bit confusing, but once I uh, put it all together, you will actually see what I mean. So there we go. I've just popped that, um, the back part, the um, snap there, placed, the snap on top there. And what I need to do is make sure that is right behind the back part of the snap, like so. And then using this tool that comes with the actual pack, it's, uh, it's the punch. So that will mushroom out that part 
of the snap. And I'm holding, it's quite awkward. If you have this extra uh, set of hands, please use them and uh, get yourself a hammer. Uh, I'm just using this uh, nice rubber hammer and I'll give it a firm whack. Or, or should I say a firm few whacks. And there we go. That's mushroomed out now. And that is perfect, nice and secure. And that is how you install a snap. For the cog piece to be attached to the main part of the armor, I need a piece of webbing like this. So this actually goes behind the armor and gets stuck behind these three tabs here. And so what I'm gonna do is actually use Velcro to do that. So this will be the hook side, but I wanna be very precise with this. So what I'm doing here, I've made myself a template. So if I just remove these magnets, cause I did it on paper, which is much easier to, mark off compared to writing onto uh, webbing i've done this so this is the exact profile of that and so what i'm going to do is that all this top part here will be velcro so when let's just pretend the webbing is stuck behind here that will be nice and secure and then i'll have two snaps either side and that will secure onto the cod piece there we go. Just by using a simple paper template, it saves a load of time and hassle because this material is tough to mark off and cut and you won't waste material either. So I've made two. So you've got the lovely furry soft side, that's the loop part, and this is the rough hook uh, side. Now it's actually really important to work out which one goes where. So I wanna make sure that the hook side faces away from my crotch or I'll think I'll have cramps as this is rubbing up against me. And this part, as you can imagine, will be on the inside of the abdomen armor and it will fix on like this. Simples. As the episodes go on, you'll see me on the floor a bit more because this kit is huge. And once it starts all coming together, there's not enough space well, what, that I have in my apartment to be able to do it on a desk. So I have to do it on the floor, making sure I don't damage this lovely carpet. Gone are the days of when we had hobbies working on 172 scale airfix kits at our desk. But this is better because I can wear this. Now I'm going to actually attach the Velcro to the webbing using my sewing machine. So good old needle and thread. Now you can actually buy this Velcro with a sticky back to it and actually stick it on. However, I find that sometimes it fails and it's not that reliable in my own experience because you get different types of quality of sticky back Velcro. So with this, I actually purchased a non-sticky back and I'm gonna sew it all together. Although I've mentioned it before in previous episodes, webbing has a tendency to fray at the edge when you've cut it. So what you need to do is call, do a thing called sealing. So get yourself a flame. I'm going to use this lovely torch and I'm just going to do this. And because it's synthetic, it's not going to be set on fire. All that's done is melt the edge to that. Now that is not going to fray. It's time to get a little bit intimate because now I have to work out how to touch the crotch to the butt plate via, yeah, that's right, the no man's gland or in medical terms, the perineum. So basically, if these were just hanging off the armor, they would just be flapping about. So they need to connect in between here. And to do so, I'll be using a bungee cord so it can actually have some give. So as I walk around, it's not gonna be too tight, but yet hold it all together like so. Uh, now to do that, I need to make two hooks, or should I say a hook here and a loop there. So it'll, uh, the actual bungee cord be attached here. And as I put on this armor, I can just loop it over the hook and there we go. Now to do so, I've got a couple of off cuts there we are. And now I'm going to use a, there we go, a hot air gun to, uh, to make this soft enough, look, to make this soft enough so I can bend it and manipulate it so it conforms to the armor itself and I can loop it around and make my hook and loop. Well, that's a plan anyway, and you're going to see how I'm going to do it or how I'm going to fail. So let's just do it first time round. I'm going to be using a cup. So basically something that is heat resistant uh, because this needs to get very hot for it to start being pliable. And then <laughs> it's actually November when I filmed this. So 
this doesn't look too strange, me wearing uh, gloves, but this is protection because this gets very, very hot once I start heating it up. If I start pushing this when it's really, really hot against my lovely armor, I don't want the risk of the armor getting hot as well and distorting. Uh, it may not happen, but I like to, you know, be on the safe side. So first off, let's go. So all I'm doing is just applying gentle heat at the very end, both sides, because it is a thick piece of material, it may take a little bit longer to get really, really malleable. And you can just see it, it's bending slightly, gravity's pulling it down. I'm gonna speed this up now. go and then that's it and it cools down very quickly and stays in its shape very quickly as well so you have to be very quick and there you go so you can see what's happened there and what I'm going to do now is get the old crotch plate there and there you go actually that's first time so that's conformed to the shape there and so what I'm going to do now is bend this over to make the hook There we go. Now it's not the most prettiest thing, and this is my first attempt, but you see what I'm getting at. So now that will be stuck here. There we are. And so the bungee cord, if, if you can imagine, once I make a second part there, that bungee will come over and loop around into the hook and that will keep it all together. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that result. And after adding a little bit of glue and some elastic band material, we are done. It's actually looking pretty neat. It's a shame that you won't be seeing it once I put it on, so I may as well show you now. So I used two-part epoxy resin to make sure that these were secure on the inside of the armor, because the last thing I want to happen is suddenly you hear the twang, and one of these things have been ripped off, and these are gonna be flapping about all over the place. So that's all stuck down with two-part epoxy resin, and that's, super secure so there's the loophole that i made with the hot air gun and there's the other one here as well this one i crunched up a little bit more because i wanted one end to be like flapping about securely so i won't have to worry about this coming off of this hook i just have to worry about the front one and also when i actually put it on it's going to be easy for me to grab onto this in between my legs and pull it and then hook it onto here like so. Uh, it's a little bit, I would say, too much uh, cord here, but I'll, I'll have to test that out once I try it all on. But all in all, it came out quite well. Now that everything's made, it's all about putting it together, which is a whole different subject altogether. So here we've got the webbing where I've sewed on the Velcro, so that's the hook side. And very nice and neat with the female snaps either side there. If I turn it over, you can see the other side. So that attaches behind these three tabs. And how that attaches, if I just flip this armor around, there you go. So there's the nice soft furry side. Again, if, it, if you're dealing with Velcro, make sure the furry side is facing you and the nasty rough hook side is facing away from you just in case it misaligns and it starts rubbing against you and even though you're wearing a body stocking you don't want that destroyed by that rough velcro now what i'm going to do now is just attach it like this there we go making sure that i hit the same points where i've got that velcro and there we have it so that hangs like that and not to worry about these things here like the corners hanging out because that's all going to be covered by the belt and then all i do with the crotch part is then snap it on one snap very satisfying hit to hear that and the second snap and there we go so that is how the crotch part of the first order stormtrooper armor is attached to the abdomen Next is to attach the butt plate. So, oh, hang on a minute. So it takes a glass of port to put all this together because I'm celebrating here. 
because it has been quite a mission for something that's been quite simple in regards to just two pieces of armor plate. So what I had to do with this is make a piece of webbing like that. So if I just show you the details there. So on the butt plate, as you, if you remember, there you go, you've got the two male snaps here and some Velcro over here, and I'll explain why. So if I get the webbing that I made for it, so the female parts are here. So there's the female part, female part, and the receiving Velcro. Again, hook side going away from your body. And so that will attach behind these tabs here. So I'm going to snap this here. Nice, satisfying snap. The Velcro attaches in the middle tab. And then the final snap. There you go there. So now, there you go, if you can just see that. So now that's how it hangs. It hangs off this webbing. And so what does this webbing attach to? Good question. So these two tabs here, yep, you can hear that. That is the hook side, the nasty rough side. So there's, I would say there's about three or four inches of Velcro there stitched onto these pieces of webbing there. And if I just show you the inside of my armor, there is the lovely soft furry receiving side there. There's two big strips. And so what I will do here is basically very straightforward. This just clings on to the Velcro on the inside. Now I'm doing this quite roughly because I'm filming this, but what I wanna do is make sure I've got this correctly aligned. So when I turn it over, the gap is perfect enough for the belt. So here's the belt. Let me just bring it over. So this belt has got to be able, the width of this belt has got to fit with this recess. Now I'm gonna play around with this and uh, once I do it, I'll put it on and you can see how it all looks. It's one of those few times in YouTube where someone will actually look at the view and say, check out my crotch and butt. For something that's only just two panels attaching to the armor, it was actually kind of really difficult working out how it attaches and also the order of operations of how and what parts go on first to be able to wear it. In fact, I did a time lapse of me putting this on for the first time, trying to work out, do I put on the belt first or the crotch first or the butt plate first? Now, to all those sharp I-501 first type troopers out there, and I say type because there are many people out there who aren't in the 501st, but they're really, really picky in regards to there's an inch out of place or whatever. Yes, I know my belt is slightly, I would say a little bit too big, but you know what? For the first time, it's not too bad. First time wearing this, it's not too bad. I may make an adjustment later on once I put on all the armor, once it's finished, but overall, I think it's actually quite cool. It's, do you know what? It's the first time, not just the lid, not the yoke or the chest plate, this bit, it now feels like I'm a real trooper. You can you can start feeling what it's like, the maneuverability of it. And talking about maneuverability, as I've mentioned many times before on my new Hope Armour, the new Hope Armour is made of less parts, or should I say the kit that I have is made of less parts and is a bit restrictive. But this one, because there's so many parts that make this up, it's a double-edged sword. One side of it is great because I actually feel like I can move around a bit more, perhaps a little bit of dancing. I'm not gonna be that type of trooper by the way, I'm gonna always keep in character. But at the same time, it's like trying to put this on. Someone actually said to me on social media, would you actually have someone help you put this on? And I laughed at them thinking, no, no, I can put this on all by myself. I'm a grown boy. But do you know what? After trying to just put this on, it does actually help. Especially if you've got someone very close to you when you're starting to hook on that elastic band between your bum and your crotch area. That was a bit of a pain to do myself, but I did it. Don't worry, I did it. My long suffering fiance didn't have to do it. But um, what do you think? I think this came out okay. Again, don't get me wrong, there are some adjustments that need to happen. This is the first time I've put this on. By the way, these are the screenshots I'm gonna give to the 501st because they want pictures, not videos for clearance. And uh, not just for clearance, but just seeing the progress. 
but it's actually not too bad. And also I had to adjust these belts a bit more to go upwards because surprisingly the abdomen part goes much further up. I would say just below the belly button to me anyway. I'm five foot seven, but um, yeah, I'm feeling like a trooper. No, this is not a continuity mistake. I purposely stopped the filming to get myself my glass of port because this is a celebration. I'm well over halfway of making my Stormtrooper First Orphan Order armor, and I'm really, really happy with the results so far. Now, if I've glossed over something or I've not gone into detail about something, please leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube, and I'll respond and give you some more details, or you can message me directly. Also, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, as Captain's Dry Dog. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. I know a lot of channels say that, but it really does help with the support and knowing that people are out there watching this and I know that I'm helping others navigate their way of trying to be a First Order Stormtrooper because I know how hard it actually is. So in the meantime, thank you for watching. You take care. I'm John Child. This is Captain's Dry Dog and you stay safe and I'll see you on the next episode. Live long and prosper. I mean, come to the dark side.